Hello, my name is Daniel Trevor Chimera, and this is the 10th, 10th broadcasting for the Green Talk Show. Uh, today's topic shall be a climate change with uh, mental health. Uh, we have discussed many things which do not seem like they link uh, to this uh, problem we face, but the, the talk show's purpose is to teach you that link. Now, for uh, today's case example, mental health, you're of course wondering, how is climate change related to it? Let me explain. Now, first off, uh, climate change is the long-term change within uh, the uh, weather patterns for uh, some place. Now, uh, we have the signs which, which proves that it is taking place. We have uh, raising uh, heat levels, we have droughts, we have floods. And now on the health uh, side defects, we have um, breathing problems, lung, uh, heart problems. And then we have threats to mental health. And that is where today's discussion shall be centralizing on how climate change is affecting mental health and how it will affect mental health. My guests today are uh, Professor Maggie. Um, she is a, a doctor. She is a sports lady. And she will explain more uh, who she is. Uh, uh, professor, thank you for uh, tuning in. May you explain to the viewers who you are? Ma'am? Uh, prove... Ma'am, hello? Ma'am? King. Okay. Um, while Hi. we... Yes, hello, ma'am. Um, Hi. You can hear yes. me now. Yes, I can. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. Uh, may, you may you please explain to the viewers more uh, uh, about who you are? My name is Maggie Chigozi. Yes, I'm a medical doctor by training, but uh, I am also uh, Ambassador SDG5. Uh, this is uh, looking at gender equality, so I'm a feminist. I'm also an entrepreneur and I'm a farmer. I'm a mother, so I am many things. Um, but uh, the topic of today is really important as we together try to fight climate change. Thank you. Did so. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Um, while uh, today's broadcast shall be slightly shorter than usual uh, due to the presidential speech, but we shall make do. So, um, ma'am, let's get uh, right towards it. What is mental health? Um, mental health, and I think Dr. Sabrina is a practicing physician. She'll be with us in a few minutes. Is That's where, true. yeah, you you uh, you are mentally healthy. You're a happy person. You. Uh, do not have any, you know, mental problems. 
you are not depressed, you are not addicted. So um, mental health is where you are, you know, normal um, as far as, uh, you know, mentally. And uh, our mental health is very uh, fragile and easily affected by so many things. Uh, like you said earlier, the, the issues of climate change are affecting the mental health of people, uh, the mental well-being uh, of uh, people. And uh, therefore, uh, it, it becomes a problem and uh, we need to address as in partnership, all of us, we need to try to address this, these problems of mental health in the population. Yes, true. Um, uh, dear viewers, you should know that 13% of the world's population is struggling with mental health problems. And that is no small number. That is uh, roughly 769 million people worldwide struggling with, with this. Therefore, uh, to provide a brief summary for what mental health is, this is the a general uh, psychological, social, and then uh, uh, emotional uh, well-being for someone. Now, uh, ma'am, I need you to start off with on this. Um, can the environment affect um, mental health? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the environment is critical towards uh, our well-being and therefore our mental health in that, uh, you know, it causes you to, when it's changing, for example, uh, we hear that uh, levels of water are raising in some, on, on some islands and the people are looking to that island actually disappearing. So you can imagine how much worry and anxiety is caused to those communities that are in these places. We have communities like our Batwa who have traditionally lived in the forest and now the forest is not available to them uh, for various reasons. Again, they worry, they get depressed, and so they, they do suffer from various types of mental illness uh, affecting them. Uh, and therefore, environment is, is really critically important uh, that it doesn't uh, uh, change. Global warming is happening. We all know their targets. Last night I had uh, our own young uh, environmentalist, uh, Greta Thunberg, really not impressed with how much progress the leaders have made in addressing this issue that is really scary and frightening uh, of climate change. Uh, so she was concerned that we're not doing enough. We are going to affect even more people. The figures you just uh, uh, mentioned are really scary, but uh, we will have much, much more than that if nothing is done about uh, you know, climate change and how it is affecting. Uh, there is floods in some areas. Uh, people are washed out of their homes. Their businesses are destroyed, their homes are destroyed, their crops are destroyed. So there's hunger after that. Uh, there is uh, desertification in other areas. So that's the problem with uh, climate change. It's not the same thing everywhere. And it's af affecting different, uh, different people in different parts of the, the, the world differently. Uh, so there is desertification, uh, shortage of water to drink. Uh, how, how anxious that would make you as an individual when you can see that you're not going to have water to drink in, in the very near future. And therefore, your mental well-being is affected. Uh, so it's truly important to our mental health that the focus on climate change, uh, the prevention of climate change, 
uh, is, is maintained. Uh, actually, we are not doing enough. We need to do much, much more. I want here to thank my tree initiative. Let's plant trees. All of us can plant trees in countries like ours. Yes, there are those in the deserts who cannot plant trees, but we can plant trees and we can plant trees on behalf of the other parts of the world where maybe it's not possible, it's cold in Greenland, it's a desert in the Sahara Desert. So maybe they can't plant so many trees, but beautiful country of Uganda, plenty of water, plenty of rainfall. Let us join My Tree Initiative, the youth of My Tree Initiative and plant more trees. Thank you. Um, like she has mentioned, there are a lot uh, when uh, floods and droughts come, uh, Uganda's uh, biggest percentage relies uh, with uh, farming. Therefore, when these droughts uh, destroy their crops and then in some cases displace these people, they will suffer from depression, anxiety. So, ma'am, um, the UN Environmental Program uh, uh, last year, they uh, pr pr proposed that uh, caring for nature will help take care of your mental health. What is, is your say there? Oh, absolutely. If we can, it, it will help. It, it is not the complete solution. There are other problems affecting people's mental health on top of climate change and uh, nature, but definitely it, it is affecting a large percentage of the, the, the figures that you, you talked about earlier and causing them unnecessary worry and depression. So if we can begin to work on, uh, you know, issues of uh, you know energy clean energy the use of clean energy and not continue with the, you know pollution the pollution that we are doing at the moment if we can you know plant trees as we said earlier if we can manage the water resources better uh, so that everyone has access to water uh, and they don't have to worry and they don't we won't be having floods we will manage the wetlands better. Um, we will, uh, you know, re uh, replant so much forest has been destroyed, replanted. The global warming is causing the icebergs in, um, in Greenland and, uh, you know, the, the North and South Pole uh, to melt and therefore pro providing more water than, than, than is normal. Uh, in the various oceans of this world. Uh, so all that is making people very, very sick. As some people are warriors, they worry more. Some of us are able to ignore such things and continue with life. Others worry about this and it definitely affects their mental health. Uh, so let's try and do something about it. Let us we have the SDGs, let's try and implement them uh, where, so that by 2030, we will make sure we, the world is not getting warmer and uh, like it is doing at the moment. Indeed in, in so. Um, you have mentioned that, um, that, that some people uh, naturally worry more uh, for such things, uh, while some will just say, oh, that's not my problem right now. But um, from your point of view, um, how do you propose that we can mentally prepare people for what is happening, for what uh, climate change is doing? Yes, uh, of course, uh, programs like this, where we are talking to especially young people, I think the target here is, is your, your age mates. Um, we are trying to sensitize them 
because the solution does not lie with just the leaders. The solution to climate change lies with each and every one of us. What are we doing? So let us all understand that yes, our leaders can make big impact. They can make those big changes, but we as well, uh, as individuals, one by one, there's something that you can do towards uh, reducing this so that those warriors that we talked about uh, will feel more comfortable. We'll, when we are able to share that, you know, the world's not getting warmer, um, oil is being replaced by clean energy, uh, you know, so pollution is less, uh, there, there's less drugs, they are not being, uh, you know, getting addiction to, to, to various drugs because of the, the worries that they have, then we shall be able to, to comfort them. So it's very important where programs like this, where we're able to talk to uh, the young people and uh, try to ensure that uh, they, they are less worried. Um, not only the young people, uh, adults are very worried as well. We worry about the next generation, how are our children, how are our grandchildren going to be able to live in a world that is, is, is very, very difficult, that has all these problems caused by global warming. Uh, so we as well, the, the older generation, worry and get mental health problems just as much as the young people who are looking to a bright future that they are not going to have because of the global warming, climate change. Now, um, I am going to make a small uh, detour. Uh, during this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, with people being forced to stay home, my age groups, we've been told to wait for school, to start and yet we have not been sure. How do you believe that has been affecting people's mental health? It has been uh, affecting, uh, again, a percentage of, the, of the, the young people who are not going to school are, are badly affected. They are missing their friends. They are missing uh, their teachers as well. It is difficult to learn any other way. I mean, we had the traditional way of going into a classroom and learning. So giving them options like learning online, uh, learning by reading, learning on TV or radio, um, it is not easy for them. On the other hand, you have to understand from the government point of view, we've got to keep the young, you know, our children alive. Um, I want to try to comfort young people and say that even in your class, you have people who are two years older than you or two, or two years younger than you. And really they are able to cope. They are in the class and they're able to cope. So, and the government has promised they're going to try to enable the, the young people to catch up. Uh, COVID-19 is a serious disease. It is really critical to us as parents that we keep our children alive. I realize some children are not looked after at home and that is unfortunate. But as, as parents, we have to encourage all parents to do better, to do better. Even while the children are not at school, they have to be looked after. You have to make sure they are busy. Maybe they are not going to school, but they can help go to the farm, they can help clean the house, they can help cook. So involve them so that keep the, the young people busy. But it is true and I hope uh, government has, uh, is about to announce, to talk about this uh, more uh, so that we know exactly how education is going to be handled over the next few months until all our children are back at school. Uh, vaccination is critical. So to those who can get vaccinated, if you're over 18, 
please go and get vaccinated. You know, get your first dose, get your second dose after another month. And then you, you will be so much safer. Yes, you may still get the disease, but it will be milder. It will not kill you. Uh, otherwise, Uganda has done so much better than most other countries. Our death rates are low. The number of uh, you know, critically ill patients are low. And this is because of the, the processes, including the school lockdown that, uh, that, that is happening right now. Uh, that is why we are doing so well. So I hope uh, the young people can try to understand and uh, still not get depressed, but know that school will come back and they will be able to achieve their dreams, but uh, they should stay home. They should not worry and they should wait until the schools are reopened. Now, um, the second reason why that was uh, brought up, it, 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 there was a, a there was some a case example, uh, some man, uh, he was in the ward, but the lack should the I say of of fresh air of just being outside with nature, it just worsened his mental while worsening uh, his body's health, which is weakening him. Now, um, uh, has people spending time outside with nature, hasn't it helped them uh, push through this hard time? Absolutely, those who have an opportunity, and I think here in Uganda, most of us do. Uh, you know, even if you are in, uh, in Kampala, there are still green areas, there are trees around. And those of us who are up country, I am on a farm, and definitely the, the fresh air is fresh and cool and uh, really, really nice. Uh, so it makes you relax, and certainly you cannot suffer from mental health while you are uh, in Uganda, especially in the rural areas. It's nice. Uh, so to the young people, yes, do go out, do go out and enjoy nature, but uh, be careful. There is peer pressure that uh, can uh, take you into wrong channels, which will cause you even more problems than you had already. Uh, so as young people, yes, go plant a tree. That would be a, a real nice thing to do because not just for yourself, but it is also for the future. You and your tree will grow up together until you, you, know, you are grown up and it is uh, uh, storing carbon and keeping it out of the environment, which is great. So yes, uh, being out with nature, going bicycling if you can, climbing trees, running around, jogging outside, uh, that is all very good and is certainly uh, an antidote to getting depressed for, for very many people. So please, young people, do go ahead and, uh, and enjoy nature, but enjoy it responsibly. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Professor Maggie, for that. It's really um, amazing to learn from you. And uh, I think we've lost Daniel because of the network, but he'll be joining us very soon. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's amazing to learn that we could do all this that you mentioned. We could um, plant a tree, we could do a hike, we could move around, we could instead walk instead of um, boarding a car. Yes, Professor, how would you advise the youth to, um, to utilize this time virtually? Um, because some of them are studying online, others um, others are working online still. How would they utilize this time properly um, to contribute to a better climate and to use uh, that time profitably, even if it's not about um, you know giving back to nature or something that is helping their community just in that way? 
Yes, and when you help your community, you feel better. You feel better about yourself. You feel better about the world. And, and they will feel better about you. So they, they are going to, to, to love you and uh, want to, to, to um, you know, uh, to respond to you and uh, make you happy. So I want to suggest some of the things that you can do with your communities. Um, sometimes the communities do not have, uh, you know, clean water. How can you help? How can you work with others? I know we as the Scouts, as Uganda Scouts Association, are able to help communities uh, by providing actually clean water sources um, for them uh, so that they can drink or clean water instead of sometimes the dirty water they drink. And the feeling that the Scouts get for having done that uh, would not allow them then to, to have any depression or mental, mental issues. Uh, the, uh, the, so that's in the water area, working with solar, solar power. How do you provide you know, light so that the young people can actually study uh, that uh, they can benefit from uh, you know even online training because they would then have be able to recharge their phones or those who are, who have access to them. I do realize online is not for everyone, but for those of you who are privileged to be able to study online, it is not <laughs> easy. It is not. It is not easy. But you need to to take it seriously as well, just as seriously as you used to take lessons and do the, the homework that you're given and read. Um, yes, it's, it, it, it is not easy. I, I see my grandchildren struggling with uh, studying online uh, as well, whereas they didn't have those similar problems while they were going to school. It is just as challenging for the teacher, you know, a class that you, you, you cannot see, that you cannot, you know, it's really not easy. Uh, so all of us have to be understanding. What else can you do? You can, uh, plastics, plastics are destroying our environment. How can you help to, to sort waste in your home? Teach your parents, teach your, your mom that, you know, plastic should not go together, say with matoke peels, uh, because the other ones can continue to be useful uh, in the environment as manure or as animal feed, whereas the plastic uh, cannot ever be destroyed. It will take many, many years. So you should, less, you should encourage her to use less of plastics. Um, so all those are areas where you can contribute as an individual. And then, of course, let's plant many, many trees. I've said that very many times because it's one of the easy ones. Just get a seedling. Go to my tree initiative. They'll give you a seedling. Go to National Forestry Authority. They have free seedlings for the community. And you can plant a fruit tree. You can plant all kinds of trees and uh, enable our world to breathe again because it's difficult in breathing. And the other one is COVID-19. How have you, first of all, most importantly, protect yourself? Protect yes, yourself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Mm. You protect yourself, not because you're selfish, but because you want to protect everyone else around you. It's so infectious. You get it, your baby sister might get it. Your parents might, and your grandmother and grandfather will be badly affected by it. So be very careful. You are not being selfish when you wash your hands, you distance, you wear your mask all the time, as my, well, whenever you're out in public. Uh, it is to help the rest of the community, and you will feel good about yourself more than if you go ahead and infect others. Yes, Professor, yeah, yeah, thank you very much for that. Um, also, the, the ministry is, is vaccinating university students lately, so it's a call to all yes. people out there to utilize this opportunity. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, uh, I've, I've gone for, for my first job. It's a nice experience. 
And one amazing <laughs> thing is that you can actually choose whether it's Pfizer or AstraZeneca or any other vaccine that you like. Yeah, something that wasn't uh, back then. So, Professor, we have a uh, um, comment. Yes. Yes, Daniel, please go on, go on, carry on, as Professor Maggie will be. Um... Okay. Um... Uh, professor. Yes, Daniel. Yes, uh, Professor has just uh, switched off, but she has given us some great advice. I think it's time we can end the live right now. Sure. Okay.